Hello, good evening everyone, or good day, depending on the world time zone you're in, or good night, I guess. Welcome back. I guess we are going to do, well, we are going to finish, I hope we are going to finish the Accelerate T02 task from Google CTF. We got to a, like, pretty far point. We kind of knew what to do, so I hope some of you actually solved it in between the live streams. Now, the state where we are at last time was basically, we were in this corridor, right? And there's a, there's a cannon here which is like uh, described as a weapon, I guess, which deals 1000 damage and it shoots a projectile which goes like through this corridor pretty fast, faster than we can run. And what we need to do is we need to run through this corridor to reach the flag. The flag is here. And unfortunately, the projectile is too fast for us. It's too large. We cannot really duck. We cannot really like jump over it. What we discovered last time is that we could actually abuse one item which we found, uh, the item which we can find here. Uh, which is a poison. Uh, we can also find the poison, by the way, here, I believe, on this on this little platform. What the poison does, it basically decreases our HP by one. That's it. That's all it does. But there are no, like, checks there. It just decreases it by one. It doesn't, like, clamp at zero. It just goes past zero. Which is a like, great news, because when the cannon fires and it hits us, eventually it will hit us, because it goes really fast. Then we are at, like, ma actually we are at zero HP, because, like, the cannon uses a different function to decrease our health. Th that function actually clamps at zero, meaning it cannot, like, decrease our HP under zero, then we can drink the poison and this would decrease our HP to minus one. And only then, in the logic of the game, comes the check whether the player has zero HP. If the player has zero HP, they are pronounced dead. Minus one is not zero. So if we drank the poison in the exact same frame, this has to be frame perfect, that the cannon hit us, uh, we are still alive. The issue is that we have to drink this poison, like, in the same frame that the cannon hits us. Because, like, first the logic of the cannon is done in the game loop, and then the logic of items used, weapons used, which is the poison in this case, but it, it's in the same frame. And then later, only later, there is this, like, uh, yeah, is the player dead? So if we do it in the same frame, everything is fine. If we missed the frame, then we are dead. To do this, we actually have to write a script. And we have to write a script which would I guess tell us that, hey, the cannon is almost about to hit us. And because this is a CTF challenge, like, there are like multiple ways to do it. Like a super proper way would be to have a make sure to save the state and create, a, let's say, a frame predictor or rather a state predictor where you would run the whole, all the calculations, all the game logics for the next frame, right? And then you would know, oh, the cannon hit us or not. And then you just roll back everything or like, uh, discard the state and go back into this, uh, well, the previous state or the current state actually, and then from the future you would actually know in this frame the cannon is going to hit us, and therefore, because you know that, you could uh, you could drink the poison. But we are not going to go that route, because that's a s slow route. What we are going to use, we are going to use some kind of a heuristic, which is about like, hey, is the projectile super close to us? Because if the projectile is super close to us, that means, yeah, it's going to hit us. So what we have to do is we just have to calculate the distance between the projectile and the player. And if the distance is like small enough, I don't know what small enough means, because like, we are probably going to have to, to, to make the code fast. Um, calculate the distances between the centers of the player and the center of a projectile. We could do some more math and actually like add the width of a player and add the uh, width of a projectile and like compare with that and this is probably what we are going to do but we are going to kind of wing it. And yeah, uh, let's get to it basically, let's try to implement that. What we want to do is we want to start with actually getting the coordinates of the player and getting the coordinates of the uh, projectiles. And I, I'm, not sh I'm not really sure where are the coordinates. So is it like player, player X? Is it just like this? Uh, and by the way, I don't need the Y coordinate at all, because like, it's a, you know, it's a pretty... We are going to be on the same level, okay? We can just ignore the vertical coordinate. We, we don't care about it at all. We can just focus on the X. Okay, so yeah, this is, this is it. Like, uh, let's try to move the player right. And it increases. Wow, it's actually a floating point value. Well, that makes sense. It's kind of funny because, like, in initially it was like, oh yeah, ah, that's weird. Okay, well, anyway, it works. So we have the X coordinate. The game didn't crash and tell us, hey, there is no such field, which is a good thing, which now means that we need to find where are the projectiles. And we kind of saw the code which handles that. I, I'm not 
fully sure, I don't fully remember where that code was, I'm just going to look for it. So what we want to do is how do we, we, we need to know how do we access the combat system and I'm guessing like in this game state, which is this Ludicer, there's going to be a reference to it. Yeah, yeah, self combat system, this is it. And we will access there for the active projectiles stuff. There we go. I'm kind of winging it, but I kind of guess that the projectile will actually also have the X coordinate. So let's do for P in projectiles, in active projectiles. So we have the player here. I'm actually going to like just like truncate the player to an integer and then I'm going to say to end the line with a space and I'm going to print the projectiles uh, X coordinates here as well. I'm again truncating it to int yeah, this is this is fine let's actually end it with this and here let's just add a new line i oh actually i don't think i have to do this cool so now in, in each line it should print as like the coordinates of a player and then the coordinates of a projectile okay there is no projectile right so oh there is oh i guess we can see the, the cannon actually firing the projectile you can just see it zooming past us right the cannon is probably firing the projectile and then because the projectile is so far from the player the game logic is like yeah we don't need to calculate this let's just like Remove it. Let's see if this guy, uh, the camera enemy, will shoot at us and whether, yeah, this creates a projectile as well. Perfect. Which means that I guessed the names of the fields which was absolutely, like, uh, not hard because, like, yeah, X is a pretty... makes a lot of sense. I'm going to comment this debug code out. I honestly do prefer the printed method, method of debugging rather than the attaching a debugger and using a debugger. It's just, like, faster. If the difference, like the absolute difference between the player position, which is self player X and the and the position of the projectile is less than uh, something. I don't know. I'm going to say 40, but I'm going to calculate it in a second. Then I want to make sure that space is pressed. So self used keys, and I'm just going to add to used keys a space which is what, arcade uh, key space, I believe. Okay, so if this, then we can also like um, using poison. We can say that we are using poison in this case. I'm going to also help myself with the debugging a little bit by doing something totally different. I'm going to leave the code alone and I'm going to like edit the, the projectile. There we go, this is the fire bitmap which is hitting us. It's, it's scaled up, but that's it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like make it, uh, yeah, like do this. Remove the transparent background because this will maybe tell me where is the, the actual fire. I will, I will be able to see it a little bit better. So that's one thing. And then for the uh, player, there we go. I don't, I don't think we, we care about this, but my, perfect, good. Okay, let's run here. Okay, and now, wait, wait, wait. yeah, I just start here and let's hope it times it correctly, no. There is like, it missed timed it for whatever reason. Let me uncomment uh, the, 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 the printing of where, where are the actual projectiles, because if I uncomment it, it will, it should be able to tell me whether I'm drinking poison like too late or too early. So let's go here, that it should, okay. And I'm actually going to stop. Okay, and let's do this. Let's analyze what happened. Why, why is this like so far from the player though? And it still hit me. You know what, I'm going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to do this here, and I'm going to do this. You know what, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to just print maybe the distance here. So let's call it uh, D, and that's the distance. And I'm going to like go a little bit differently here. I'm going to do print this and print the distance and then do another space, I think. Yeah, just for debugging or even two spaces. So what killed me was here. Okay, I was using the poison too early. So I guess like uh, 28 wasn't enough, so below 28. Not maybe I should be like also printing the whether I'm dead or not. So the player and then I'm going to do self player whether I'm dead or maybe HP. Let's just print HP. That should work, right? That should be telling. And I'm going to switch the 32 here. I'm going to switch it to 28 and see if that's uh, like less than 28 maybe. And let's see if this works. And I'm going to stop. 
and I'm dead again. I'm using the poison at 26. Did I use the poison too late or did I use it too early? Maybe at the end of the calculations I can do one more thing. Uh, mainly I don't do this here. What I do is like at the end of the calculations when it goes to send game info. Here I already know if I'm dead or not. So what I can do here is I can print uh, self player dead as well. And uh, okay, let's go with 20, 20, uh, what was it? 26, well, 24. I died. So let's see, yeah, I'm, I'm dead already in this frame. Now the question is like, at what point in time is it actually checked whether I'm dead? I need to know if it's done on the beginning of a frame or the, at the end of a frame because this will like uh, decide whether I should like add 10 or not add 10 there. It killed me. I'm using poison and I'm not dead. Like the issue is that I'm saying I'm using poison here, right? But why is my HP still 62 in the next frame? I, I have a bug in my code. I'm saying I'm using the poison here, but uh, my health actually is the same. I'm not really using the poison, am I? So when I'm drinking it, I'm going to say poison used, something like this. And I'm just going to go with this because I have these other debug messages. No, yeah, so I used the poison and I immediately used it. You can see that like I have like 100 HP here and then 99 HP uh, immediately after. Well, this is good. The question would be like, is space considered pressed at that point? Uh, I'm going to print whether space is pressed. So whether arcade uh, key space is in used objects. Uh, sorry, used keys. Used keys. Uh, okay, wh where is the message where, that I'm dead? The message that I'm dead is here, right? Yeah, I'm dead here. True, this is the message with the space. So yeah, space is considered pressed. Why is space considered pressed? Okay, so I used the poison the first time and I never... Oh, I get it. Because I used the poison, right? And I never pressed space on my own. I never pressed space. That means that it was like never cleared from the used keys. On the flip side, why wasn't it cleared from used keys? Like used keys are supposed to, oh, because this isn't a copy. If this would be a copy, it would work. Let's do a copy here. But I'm actually assigning here, yeah. Okay, let's do a copy. Maybe this will work. That's a funny bug. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, I died, but maybe it's, yeah, but poison is used. It's just used like one frame too late. So it's uh, here is like 30, below 30, I'm guessing it should be used below 30. Let's go with 30, just equal 30, shoot, okay, stop. Oh, we are alive, minus one HP. Yes, there we go, perfect. Uh, we've done it, chat, uh, after so many like issues, but yeah, we have health minus one now. We are still alive and we get the flag. So, so that's it uh, for this challenge, which was pretty fun, right? Because like we had to do two things. We had to implement the cheat to kinda circumvent the camera enemies like control inversion. And then we had to implement drinking the poison. We had to find the bug about the poison and, and implement drinking the poison when, when the time is right, which is when the bullet just hit us basically in the same frame. So folks, uh, next uh, time we are going to, uh, I guess like solve another challenge from Google CTF. I'm not sure yet to, yet which one, but I think we are going to go for Accelerate Teaser Part 1, or rather not Part 1, Challenge 1. It's both easier and harder. I will, you will see why. It's, uh, it took me ages on the CTF, but I now know a little bit better how to approach it, so it should be fun. Have a great evening and take care. Bye.